Hey, this is Pascal from RSL and I'm going to show you our device called Belay. I will also walk you through some of our new features coming with the new update that we just released. Belay is a Max for Life delay device. It utilizes a technique called windowing, which makes smooth transitions between small sound snippets. This technique allows us to create effects like time-based pitch shifting, grain delays and to modulate the delay time without affecting the pitch. First feature coming with the new update is the color mode. This lets you turn all the dials and numbers to white for better visibility. On the left you can adjust the delay time. You can also sync it to Ableton. If you enable this button, the delay times will fade, creating a repitching effect. Underneath the delay time we have spread. Spread randomizes the delay time for each window. So if you turn down the window size and turn up spread, we get these grain delay effects. We can also turn up Reverse, which adjusts the possibility of each window being played backwards. Next to time we have Feedback. You can set the amount of the signal being fed back into the delay chain. Right next to it is the Routing Matrix, which lets you route the left signal to the right and vice versa. and create those stereo delay effects. Underneath we have the different kinds of clipping and compression of the signal inside the feedback chain. The LFO section modulates the delay time. You can choose between different waveforms and also flip the waveforms. On the left side we have frequency to adjust the speed of the modulation, which can also be synced to Ableton. Next there is spread, which adjusts the right modulation signal of the LFO. And smooth is when you want to smooth the modulation signal to avoid these clicks and generate these pitch glitches. You could also enable window, which updates the delay time for each new window. Next up is FM, or frequency modulation. You can adjust the frequency of the FM, the amount, and spread, which shifts the phase of the right modulation signal. Underneath each of these dials we have this small waveform. When you click on it, a number appears which sets the randomization for each window. Underneath FM we have the pitch. We can shift the pitch in playback speed and also in semitones.
the window section you can shape the envelope and the size of the windows. Shape and slope adjust the envelope of the window. Chitter randomizes the volume of each window. You can also sync the window size to Ableton. The effects of the window manipulation can be better heard when you enable spread or pitch shift or reverse. In Belay we have two filters. First filter is this bright and dark filter which adds a low shelf and a high shelf filter to the signal. This filter is located inside the feedback chain. The second filter is a morph filter. You can morph in between four different kinds of filter types. And also dynamically set the position of the filter in relation to the feedback chain. So pre sets the filter in front of the feedback chain and only affects the incoming signal. Post sets it after the feedback chain and feed is inside. For example, when you turn the resonance up in here, you can hear it being multiplied or amplified inside the feedback. Last dial is a simple dry and wet. One thing I really like to do with Belay is to use it as a resonator. For this we can take a small noise burst as input. I use this very short snare sound. First thing we need to do is to bring down the delay time until we hear these frequencies coming up. The bright and dark filter is very useful to shape the sound of the resonance. filter is quite useful if you want to bring out some of the frequencies in the resonator or you use the bandstop filter to eliminate some of those. Also add some spread and bring down the window size so these frequencies start to shift a bit. And with FM I can spread out the sound. From here on you can start to add all these other things to further shape the sound. So now we have this resonator sound. What I also really like to do then is to increase the feedback until we have a no input feedback. So this way I don't need to send any input into the device but I can work with what's already there and manipulate the feedback chain.
Just be careful and put a limiter of the device. If you lose your feedback signal, you can just increase the feedback amount and it will come back. thing now is that with all these small adjustments we really can shape the sound and create those evolving drones. you can start to bring in the LFO. Let's take this sawtooth wave, add some smooth and flip it. We can also distort the signal a bit more. If you get it right, you can also create kick sounds. So I hope this was helpful for you and you can now experiment yourself with the device and find some new sounds and stuff that you can do with it. Have fun with it and thank you for the support. <laughs>